Hi and welcome. This is the second part of a video series on file handling in C Sharp, and we'll focus on handling text files. This is also the 22nd and final part of a beginner's course on C Sharp. The next course produced by this channel will be an advanced course on C Sharp. So please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so as to be notified of future content. You are of course welcome to share any of the videos produced by this channel with anyone you feel may benefit from their content. Right, so I think the best way to traverse this subject matter is with a code example. So in this code example, we are going to create a directory within the same path where our code executes. We are then going to manually create a number of individual text files containing information on a given subject matter. I've chosen Wildcats as the subject matter. Our code will open each of the individual text files within the relevant directory, read its content into a string variable, and write the content into an HTML file. We'll use a bit of basic jQuery to format the contents of the HTML so that the content of each of the relevant text files appears as an item in a jQuery UI accordion widget. For more information on jQuery UI and the accordion widget, please check out this URL. This link can be found below in the description. As always, the code created in this tutorial can be downloaded from GitHub. A link to the appropriate repository will be available below in the description. So first, let's create a .NET Core console application. Let's name this application Wildcats application. Okay, let's create a local string variable named content at the top of the main method. Let's then create a local variable named root path and assign the property value returned by the app domain dot current domain dot base directory property to this variable. The root path variable will store the directory path from where our code will execute, i.e. the path returned from the app domain dot current domain dot base directory property. Let's create an empty try catch structure in the main method. Let's create a private static method that returns an object of type directory info. And note the red squiggly line under the directory info type reference. This is because we haven't included the system.io namespace directive at the top of our code. One way to do this is to hover our mouse pointers over the red squiggly line, click show potential fixes, and then the using system.io context menu item. Great. Let's name this method initialize source directory and include a string parameter named root path within its method signature. The source directory will contain our text files. So let's create a variable to reference our source directory and name it wildcats directory path. Let's create another string variable named info file path and this variable will store a reference to a text file that our code will automatically create if there are no other text files present within the wildcats directory path, i.e. the source directory. So the content within the information.txt file will display on our HTML page in the browser advising the user that no text files have been added to the appropriate folder. Let's write code to check if our source directory already exists. And if it does not exist, we want our code to create the directory. Let's write code to store an object of type directory info, which contains a reference to the directory residing at the location stored in the wildcats directory path string variable. And let's write code to check if there are any text files within the wildcats directory. And if there are no text files in the relevant directory, let's create the information.txt text file containing text that will inform the user that there are currently no text files within the appropriate directory. Else, if the information.txt file does exist and there is more than one text file, let's delete the information.txt file. So 
So the final step is to return the directory info object referenced by the variable named source directory to the calling code. Let's go back to the main method and within the try part of the try catch block, write code to reference the directory info object returned by the method we have just created, namely the initialize source directory method. And let's store this object reference in a variable named source directory, which is appropriately defined as the directory info type. Now let's create a string variable and name it HTML output file path and assign it the combined text value of root path and the name of the HTML file that will contain the consolidated text content read from the individual text files that we will add to the relevant directory. So let's write code to return an array of files from our source directory through the use of the getFiles method, which is a member of the directory info type. Note how the text filter star.txt is passed as an argument to the getFiles method. This filter ensures that only references to files that contain the txt extension are returned in our files array. Let's now instantiate a streamwriter object within a using statement so that we can write to our HTML output file. Let's pass the HTML output file path string variable as an argument to the streamwriter class's constructor. So within the using block, let's first include a marker by creating a to-do comment. And we'll come back to this code when appropriate. So our comment states to do right top part of HTML file. So in a bit we'll create a method that creates the top part of our HTML file. Let's create a for each loop to traverse the text files that will be included in our wildcats folder, i.e. our source directory. Let's create a stream reader object within a using statement. Within the using block, let's include code that calls the read to end method on the stream reader object and assigns the returned text value to our string variable named content. Note that by including the instantiation of the stream reader and the stream writer objects within using statements, .NET will ensure that the close method is called, which will close the file, and the dispose method is subsequently called, which will free up memory space previously taken up by the relevant object being disposed. Let's include another to-do comment, which is a marker for where a method will be included that will create the body of our HTML file. Note that this method will be included within the for each loop. Then outside the for each loop, let's include another marker where we'll later include a call to a method that contains functionality to write the bottom part of the HTML output file. Then let's include another marker where a call to a method will be made that will contain code to launch the user's default browser and display the HTML file that is created by our code within the user's default browser. We'll create the code for this method in a bit. So let's create the four methods that we marked with comments in our main method. So let's create a method named addTopHTML. This method is a private static method that does not return a value and contains one parameter of the type streamwriter. So HTML and jQuery are beyond the scope of this tutorial, so I'm not going to include an explanation of functionality relating to HTML and jQuery code. All that needs to be clear here is that we are writing to an HTML file. For those who are not familiar with HTML, very basically an HTML file is essentially a text file containing markup that is read and interpreted by your browser. For those who are not familiar with jQuery, jQuery is a JavaScript library used for creating client-side interactive functionality. jQuery is being used in this code to display the contents of our text files in a jQuery UI accordion widget. As stated earlier, for more information on the accordion widget, please click on the appropriate link included below in the description. So in the interests of time, I'm going to fast forward the creation of this code. In order to create the code yourself, you can pause and copy this code from the video itself, but the easier option is to download the code from the relevant GitHub repository, or you could just copy the code from the relevant GitHub webpage. A link to the appropriate GitHub repository has of course been included below in the description. This code also includes a bit of string handling, 
So for more information on strings in C Sharp, I've included a link below in the description to a video provided by this channel on C Sharp strings. Let's now include a call to the addTop HTML method from our main method. So let's replace the appropriate marker we created earlier with a call to the addTop HTML method. Let's create a method named build HTML body. This method is a private static method that does not return a value. This method includes three parameters. The first parameter is of the stream writer type. The other two parameters are of the string data type. OK, let's include a call to this method in our main method. Note that we are using the path.getNameWithoutExtension method when passing in a string argument denoting an accordion items heading. This is because each text file included in the HTML file will have a heading. This heading will be the name of the text file that contains the relevant content regarding a particular wildcat. So we want to extract the file name without its path and extension. We are using the path.getNameWithoutExtension method for this purpose. Note we are also passing in the content variable. This variable contains the text read from one of the relevant text files that will be created before we test this code. The contents will contain information about a particular wildcat. Let's create a method named addBottomHTML. It is a private static method that does not return a value. It accepts one parameter of type StreamWriter. And let's write a method that will launch the user's default browser and display the generated HTML file within the browser. Let's also include some exception handling code in the try catch block within our main method. OK, let's run the code. There seems to be an issue. OK, to resolve the issue, we need to include a space here. Let's test the code. Now we can see the accordion has one item, and the text for this item contains the text we created from our code when the condition that no text files are present 
in the wildcats directory is true. So let's create some text files containing content about the theme of our application, wildcats. Let's find some content on the internet that we can include in our text files about wildcats. The first wildcat I'd like to include is the lion. So let's create a text file named lions. Let's copy some blurb about lions from the internet to our lions text file. And if we run the code, and there it is, great. The next wildcat shall be leopards. Let's create a text file named leopard and copy some content about leopards to our leopards text file. Great. Let's do the same for the tiger. Great. And then the lynx. Excellent. And lastly, the cougar. Great. And our code has traversed a number of text files about wildcats and consolidated this information into our HTML file. jQuery has been used to include the content within an accordion widget and our code launches our default browser and displays the HTML documents to us. Excellent. Please download the code created in this tutorial from GitHub. As always, a link to the relevant GitHub repository can be found below in the description. If you have enjoyed this video or found it beneficial, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please ring the bell to be notified of future content. You are of course welcome to share this video with anyone you feel it may benefit. The next video will be on handling binary files in C Sharp. Thank you and take care.